After 18 films, 38 hours, 19 minutes, over 10 years, it's all been leading to this. Avengers Infinity War. I've just come back from the movie and this is going to be my very, very spoiler filled review, so you have been warned. I managed to go see it with absolutely no spoilers, apart from the fact that I knew that Stormbreaker would be made out of some part of Groot. I didn't even look at any comments on the channel or much social media at all since the premiere of the movie. And up to this point, I have read no reviews online, absolutely nothing, so that I could give you my untainted, unbiased views of the movie. And I also did it so some idiot wouldn't spoil the movie for me. Never since the first Avengers movie have I been so hyped for a movie. In fact, this is without doubt the most hyped and heavily marketed movie of all time. So could this movie ever possibly live up to the hype? After so many successful Marvel movies before it, could it possibly rise to the top? Could it even rise to become the greatest comic book movie of all time? Well, let me answer it in this way. Yes! 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 So I've pretty much just come back from the cinema and as you can tell, I'm pretty excited but I'm also still processing a lot of this. In my opinion, this movie isn't just better than the first Avengers and a movie like The Dark Knight. It's actually a lot better. Now, some people may say those are better films from a theoretical or artistic standpoint or whatever. But you know what? I'm not a film critic and I'm first and foremost a fan. So I judge movies on the way that they make me feel. And for me, this is the best comic book movie of all time. This movie wasn't just a movie. It was an experience. It managed to balance all the many heroes in the movie. And it took us on an epic adventure following parallel storylines, using similar storytelling to that of Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now right from the beginning, I realized that this was going to be a much darker and more intense Marvel movie than we've ever seen. Heimdall sacrificed himself to save Hulk and was brutally murdered. One of my favorites, Loki, was horrifically strangled to death. And I still have goosebumps just thinking about it. But the way he introduced himself to Thanos as Loki Odin's son whilst looking at Thor, who was helpless to save him, was absolutely tragic. Loki has had a seven year story arc since 2011's Thor and you could really tell that he loved his brother after all they'd been through. The moment really set the tone for the movie and from then on the stakes were so high you just realized that anybody could die at any point. Now the interaction between Tony and Doctor Strange was perfect and their entire love-hate relationship arc was also heartbreaking at the end and I want to quickly discuss some of what Doctor Strange said to Tony. He initially said to Tony that if it came down to protecting the stone or saving Tony and Peter he wouldn't hesitate to choose the time stone. Then when he arrived on Titan using the time stone he analyzed 14 million possible futures and only one of them ended up with Thanos being defeated. Then when Star-Lord lost his cool and started punching Thanos it appeared that even that one success had possibly now failed but in the end he willingly gave the time stone to Thanos he didn't sacrifice Tony and it wasn't just to save Tony in fact after Thanos snapped his fingers and just before he ceased to exist he said to Tony it was the only way and I think that Doctor Strange didn't just look into the future and look at the outcomes for the battle on Titan he was actually referring to the entire war and this was the only way that ultimately they could defeat Thanos. And you could see that he actually knew that he would cease to exist. And it was a really heart-wrenching moment seeing some of our heroes just cease to exist. But more on that a little bit later. I love how Loki used the line that was used against him by Tony in the Avengers. We have a Hulk. But it was actually crazy to see the way Thanos just pretty much put the Hulk to sleep within seconds. And Ebony Moore didn't even want to interfere saying let him have his fun. In fact, Ebony Moore was a particularly terrifying villain. The way he defeated Doctor Strange, Spider-Man and Iron Man in New York was pretty incredible and that action scene in New York was amazing. A villain of the caliber of Ebony Moore is in fact better than most of the MCU villains we've seen up to this point. And that's also what made Avengers Infinity War so incredible. It was the emphasis on the villains in the story and of course the focus on Thanos. And in many respects, this is actually a Thanos movie. Joss Brolin's performance was beyond what I thought I would ever see in a live screen Thanos. In a day and age when not so long ago we saw this, Steppenwolf in the Justice League, it is remarkable to see the incredible CG and performance capture work for Thanos. His motivation was understandable, even if it was insane, but it was his calm, ruthless, and sometimes emotional performance that made him absolutely terrifying. You just knew he was capable of anything and no one was safe. I thought they really fleshed out the backstory between him and Gamora really well. And it was sickening the way he murdered her to get the soul stone. 
And it was great to see that the soul stone wasn't in Wakanda and it wasn't in Heimdall's eyes, but it was Gamora. She knew where the soul stone was all along. And it was only her love for her sister Nebula that made her give up its location on Vormir. And what an awesome surprise to once again see the Red Skull. Which, funnily enough, I actually predicted might happen when I broke down the Prelude comic which featured him. We now know that he had been transported to Vormir by the Space Stone during the events of Captain America the First Avenger, which was in the 40s and he doesn't seem to have aged today. But he has been seemingly given lots of knowledge somehow, and he knew about Gamora and Thanos. How he knew about that exactly is unclear. Oh, and by the way, he wasn't actually played by Hugo Weaving, he was played by Ross Marquand of The Walking Dead fame. And I thought he did a really good job, as I thought it was definitely Hugo Weaving. And it would be really interesting to find out more backstory on what the Red Skull's been doing, and if he's been anywhere else, or if he is just cursed to stay there. Now something else that exceeded my expectation was the way that they showed all the powers of the Infinity Stones. And they also brilliantly wove in Thor, Rocket and Groot's mission to make Stormbreaker on Nidavellir, with the creation of the Infinity Gauntlet by Etri, the King of the Dwarves, who ironically are in fact giant dwarves. Which I thought was awesome as they no doubt saved millions by using Peter Dinklage, who was awesome as usual. It will kill you. Only if I die. Yes, that's what kill means. Peter Parker used the trick from this old movie called Aliens to defeat Ebony Moore. That was amazing. Peter also referenced another old movie in Civil War called Empire Strikes Back to take down Ant-Man, like the AT-ATs on Hoth. And I think that the Russo brothers really captured the essence of the character of Spider-Man and in fact, all the Avengers. The chemistry between Thor and the Guardians was hilarious. Jax just gets better every time. And Zoe Saldana gave an emotional final performance as Gamora. And I actually think now that Thor has become my favorite character in the MCU. And I think if we're judging the power levels of the Avengers, there can be little doubt that Thor is now the strongest Avenger. At least in the MCU, not counting the comics. And now that Stormbreaker is essentially a portable Bifrost, he's by far the most powerful. In my opinion, of course. Until we see more of the Hulk, I guess. Now, in my theater, the biggest cheer of the movie was when Thor appeared in Wakanda with Stormbreaker. Speaking of Wakanda, that battle was insane. Incredible, mind-blowing. I thought the highlight was when Wanda came and showed her powers, and Okoye said, why has she been up there all the time? And then, of course, another highlight was Okoye herself and Black Widow teaming up against Proxima Midnight. In fact, I thought that Black Widow was believably powerful and really held her own. The only Avenger who I thought was a little underwhelming in terms of his contribution was Falcon. And I think that's somewhat understandable as he wasn't crucial to the story. And the next biggest cheer of the movie was when Cap revealed himself in the shadows. I thought Cap was good, but it was a somewhat understated performance. Tony Stark as Iron Man was incredible, and I loved, of course, his interaction with Peter Parker. And that was really the tearjerker moment for me, it was when Peter was saying he didn't want to go, he didn't want to die and he held Tony as he ceased to exist. Can you imagine the lengths that Tony is going to go to to get Thanos, to get payback, to get revenge, to get everybody back? That's what makes me so excited. As amazing as this movie was, it sets up so, so much more. We got to see tons of Bruce Banner, which was awesome, and I thought it was great the way the Hulk just didn't want to come out. He just kept saying no. And then just when he thought Hulk would say yes, he said no again. But Bruce managed to beat Cull Obsidian anyway in the Battle of Wakanda with, ironically, the Hulkbuster. And now that we're seeing Bruce and the Hulk pretty much talking to each other, I think they're setting up that they may be coming separate beings at some point in the near future. Vision and Wanda's romance worked way better than I expected it would. Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen really sold it. And Wanda having to choose to destroy Vision by destroying the Mind Stone was heartbreak. And then, of course, Wanda had to watch as Thanos simply turned back time and ripped it out of his head anyway. The way the Avengers and Guardians subdued Thanos on Titan was so creative, and the battle between Thanos and Tony was also incredible. Tony was surprised that Thanos knew who he was, and I wonder, how did he know? Is there more to this? And I really thought when Thanos stabbed Tony that that was, that Tony was gonna die, that that was gonna be the end. But I gotta be honest, I'm really glad that Cap, Tony, Thor, all the core Avengers are still there. So I think what really sets this movie apart was the fact that the villain actually won. And he didn't just win, he absolutely massacred half the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And there was a time when I thought that Thor actually had killed him with Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker being so powerful that all the Infinity Stones couldn't withstand it. Now I think that we'll find that those who were snapped 
out of existence will probably be back. It was very emotional and heartbreaking, but let's also be real. Black Panther, Spider-Man, these people are not going to die. After all, they already have sequels on the release schedule. But of course, the real fun of it is trying to figure out how all these people who were snapped out of existence are going to get back. One thing is for sure though, I think that those who died, in other words, those who didn't die in the snap, will remain dead. So Heimdall, Loki and Vision, I reckon will not be back. But I definitely think those who were willed out of existence will somehow be back. And as I said, it's going to be both agonizing and fun to try and find out exactly how. And I think the Soul Stone and probably the Soul World, which I think we got our first glimpse of, is going to be a very important part of this. Remember, matter doesn't just cease to exist, it cannot be created or destroyed, so I reckon that maybe they're just somewhere else, in a world, perhaps in the world within the Soul Stone. But I'm really just guessing at this point, and it's going to take a couple more viewings to make any clear predictions. But for now, I just want to enjoy the afterglow, as it were, that was Avengers Infinity War. I also loved the tease of Captain Marvel at the end from Nick Fury's Interstellar Pager, and he almost dropped a trademark F-bomb before ceasing to exist. To be honest, I quite miss the Nick Fury character and I think we need to see more of him. And of course we're going to get a lot more of him because he's going to be in the Captain Marvel movie which is coming out in March 2019, which is just two months before Avengers Infinity War Part 2 or whatever it's going to be called. And for sure this was always meant to be a two-part story and personally I love it. I don't mind that the movie ended on a cliffhanger of the mad titan watching the sunset in Wakanda. I really love this movie. The action is in a league of its own. No other comic book movie even comes close. The story was engaging. Thanos was the best villain, rivaling in my opinion the Joker. And I personally think this is the best comic book movie of all time. End of discussion. And it's for that reason, based on how I'm feeling now, I'm going to give Avengers Infinity War 98 out of 100. I'm going to be doing lots more Avengers Infinity War breakdowns and predictions in the coming weeks. So please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. And I really want to know what you thought of the movie. I love reading your comments, so let's discuss. Please also like this video if you did in fact like this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers for now.